fucking hate this area. Look at that. What is that? You knock on that, you'd hurt your hands. You knock on that, you'd, they'd, they'd feel you knocking through, like, upstairs. With council estates quickly becoming prime real estate, I wanted to go to the decision-making epicentre to try and meet some of the big dogs who have the power to turn council housing into glossy mega towers. Today is the day of MIPIM, which is the property trade fair in um, Kensington Olympia. There's going to be a keynote speech by Boris Johnson to like kickstart it all off. There's going to be property developers there. So I'm getting my glad rags on. I feel like Eliza Doolittle from My Fair Lady and I'm going to get in there, look all posh. And then I'll drink champagne and suddenly like fall over on a table. This is going to be so fun. It's the way to MIPIM UK. Lovely. 2014 was the first year MIPIM, usually held in Cannes, was hosted in London. This is where developers, councillors and investors network and strike deals. Outside, there was a counter hashtag Block Boris demo led by different housing action groups to try and stop the conference from going ahead. Outside, you can already see the hashtag Block Boris campaign, which is basically all the people that I've met so far, they're all out there. There's people from like the E15 mums and from Carpenters Estate. I'm about to walk past them and go inside. On the inside, it was like a completely separate world, like a boozy property Disneyland. Basically, they're obviously trying to buy my love because at every storm, there's something delicious. Great, there you go. thank you. No Cheers. There is a kind of great plan to improve, improve housing, to, to look at these areas that have traditionally been pretty shoddy, um, you know, like, like Elephant and Castle, and really bring it up. So London is 21st century. How do you describe the hate rate? Quite a, quite a dangerous place to be over, over the years, and uh, certainly at the end of its um, viable life. What makes something viable? Well, a large estate or a, a large piece of land might need to be propped up by valuable uses, and that valuable use might be private residential, it might be office space, it might be retail space or restaurant. So it's whatever makes the most money at that particular point. All spruced up for Boris, I took my seat for his well-rehearsed sermon. And the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to see you here in London, as our host has very kindly said already, of the property capital of, uh, of the world. I thought MIPIM meant, MIPIM is, was it men in property in the Mediterranean, or <laughs> meet me in the pool in a minute, I thought was what, was what, MIPIM, st what MIPIM stands for. And they're listening outside as well. I sincerely hope they are. All prices across London have gone up by 20% in the last year, according to the Financial Times. And I think you'll agree that is in many ways a compliment to London. It's a sign of success, isn't it? And I just say, finally, to all those slightly xenophobic left-wing commentators, some of whom seem to be assembled outside, apparently. I haven't seen them, they didn't seem to do when I turned up. Uh, I don't want necessarily to kick out, I don't want at all to expel any oligarchs from the planet Zog. And I stress, most of my relatives turn out to come from Zog anyway. London thrives on being an international city. We need to welcome international investment to our city. Boris wasn't alone in getting excited about foreign investment into the capital. Soaring house prices mean that London property is now considered a safe investment all over the world. It's estimated that around two-thirds of new homes in the city are bought up by foreign investors. This brings heavy competition to the buyer's market, making land value skyrocket to record levels. London is a world city. People want to be here. It's one of the economic drivers of our country. If you need an income of 100,000 or more a year, as is now the case, if you want to be a first-time buyer, then very soon people will just not be able to afford to live here. Our city! Our city! Our city! 
the consultants, the lawyers. We've got to build homes for hundreds of thousands of people. The hundreds of thousands of people who actually make this city work and on whom the economy of the whole of the UK depends. The protesters are trying to get in, so they've had to close down the shutters. There's a line of police across the front. A lot of people are, are kind of looking quite um, bewildered and confused. I think a lot of people in here are unaware why they're protesting outside. Get strongly from experience for those people and I understand and empathise with where they're coming from on the outside and a lot of people I know it's really hard to be standing on the inside schmoozing and drinking champagne. From across the room, I spotted Stephen Platts. He'd recently led a controversial eviction of the Haygate estate. In terms of regeneration and, and why it is feared, I think it is a fear of change. Um, and it's a fear of the unknown. And I think when you propose change, um, quite rightly, residents, businesses, people impacted by those changes are very resistant, are worried about how it will impact on their lives. People in the profession have to explain what the benefits of regeneration is. And it's not just about shiny buildings and, um, and increased property prices. We've got to make sure we've got our rehousing offer right, so it enables people to actually stay in the area and benefit from the regeneration. And to be quite honest, I don't think the offer's been strong enough in the past, or we haven't explained what that offer is. Regeneration is completely central to London's ability to reinvent itself and recreate itself. It's not the idea of regeneration that's the problem, it's the way that we've done it and the way that we've allowed the wealthy to walk away with the spoils and not invest in ensuring that we also have affordable homes for ordinary people who need to live and work in London. It's the end of the day. I've spent hours schmoozing discussing the future of London and it's very easy from both sides of the story to kind of create these two-dimensional figures but I think the people in here need to realise the realities of when they kind of talk about these fancy new regenerations which they're probably really proud of it doesn't mean that they couldn't empathise with the people outside and then outside it's very hard to empathise with the people inside because you just think they're people knocking down and taking the homes I think it's about like having conversation and bringing a sense of realism back to these very two disparate sides, one which is making money and one which is fighting for people's homes. <laughs>